Hi everybody, it's Ms. Tangelo. So what we're gonna do today and what you see on the screen is a list of things that are still missing. So I'm gonna go over this. Everybody is gonna have videos for every single one of these, um, but starting to go in order from here, Our Lives Matter. If you're Jason, Julio, Trevanda, Julius, Vershawn, Jassir, um, you are missing this assignment. I need you to look at this link that has been sent to you in your mailbox or um, through Miss Pringle's classroom and click on it and complete it. Amanda Gorman, Jason, Julio, Trevanda, you are missing this. Please check that you have this link. Uh, it's in your messages as well. Um, you can ask Miss Pringle for it. Eighth grade writing project. The grades aren't showing. I don't know who, would, who is missing it, but it looks like this handout collecting evidence. And this is the link to it. I have also sent everybody this as well. And Ms. Pringle has this link. So I am actually gonna go through one, two, three, four, five of these today. Uh, out, let me do, actually do, actually let me do as many as I can tonight, but I'm gonna start with annotating the text. Jason, Jason, Julio, Trevanda, Julius, you got a 50, you need to redo this. Only an 80 is okay. And Rashawn, this is the one we're gonna work on today. So we're gonna reshare our screen and we're gonna get started on annotating the text. I'm gonna read it to you. I'm gonna show you how to annotate. You're gonna do it on your own. Make sure you are following along with me. You can watch this video once and then do it, or you can simultaneously open up this link, watch this video, pause it as needed and do it like that. All right, so we're gonna annotate, we're going to use just statements and we're gonna identify words that reveal how the author feels about the topic. I've read this video for a couple of people. Um, so if you find that you actually did do this and it just, I have old grades and it wasn't updated, um, just send me a message so I know to recheck the grade for you. If you finish it, also send me a message and let me know with the title of John Haight, Champion of Rural Education Rights, so that I know to um, take you off my torture list. All right, here we go. As her middle school graduation neared, John Haight had an unappealing choice set before her. She could enroll in vocational school in the city of Shanghai, where she lived with her family for over a decade, or she could return to her ancestral home in the rural Zhangji province to attend high school there. Oopsie, sorry. Jean was not happy with her choices. She wanted to take the high school entrance exam in Shanghai and attend school in the city where she had grown up. But an age old Chinese policy called Huku prevented this from being an option for Jean. She didn't give up. However, instead she became an educational activist. That means someone who fights for rights of people in education. Jean has stood up for millions of Chinese children who have become bullied out of the education they deserve. Under the Huku system, China's population is divided into two groups, urban and rural. So people who live in the city and people who live on the farms. Jean's parents were registered as rural residents because they had lived in a rural province or farm town before they moved to Shanghai to seek better job opportunities. As a result, the Chinese government considered Jean's family to be members of a migrant workforce, meaning they would come to the city for a while, but they're not permanent residents, probably because they were renting and they didn't own. Even though they had lived as residents of the large city for almost 12 years, they did not have the same opportunities and privileges as a family whose household was reg registered in Shanghai. Maybe Shanghai has better schools. This is why Jean could not attend high school there. The city provided free primary education to migrants living in Shanghai, but was not required to offer migrants a free secondary education. Secondary education is a high school education. If Jean had enrolled in a technical school or moved back to the farm or rural region where she was born, her future job prospects would have been severely limited. The well-funded high schools in Shanghai provided a better education quality than she could have received in a small town where education standards are lower. So Jean decided to stand up for herself and demand the same right to education as her urban counterparts. So she's fighting for the right of what? She's fighting, oh Lord, I cannot right here. You guys are gonna have to, I'm gonna annotate, but you guys are gonna have to type this out. 
she's fighting for the right for equal education. You could write to education. You are gonna pause this, copy this text down and keep it moving. Let's go. Oh man, that doesn't disappear. And I'm gonna have to erase it. Select, delete, okay. In May 2012, Jean started a blog, which is kind of like an online diary, in which she laid out her argument for equal education opportunities. Like-minded activists and local media correspondents learned of Jean's efforts and her help. Hold on, I'll highlight what I'm reading. Her story gained attention as a national issue. Protesters rallied behind the young girl. They launched campaigns of support and held crowded demonstrations in front of the Shanghai Bureau of Education. While these events brought attention to Jean's plight, they also made her family a larger target for those who disagreed with her message. Some Shanghai residents formed a group called the Shanghai Defense Alliance that began organizing counter protests and making cruel remarks about Jean's family. They accused her father of tax evasion, not paying his taxes, and called their family migrant locusts. Locusts are um, bugs who eat property and like ruin property. So it's not a nice term from another region. These efforts to scare or embarrass Jean into silence failed. So they wanted her to shut up but she didn't. She continued to call her call for equal education in China, penning editorials for Chinese new newspapers and taking part in a wide variety of interviews and demonstrations. As a result, the hukou policy has become a big part of the national debate in China. Public approval for the outdated law is steadily declining. Jean ultimately decided, um, excuse me. Jean ultimately was not allowed to attend high school in Shanghai like she wanted, so she didn't win that, but she didn't resign herself to a technical school or rural high school either. Instead, she received her high school education at her home in Shanghai, where she continued to excel in her studies. I don't understand. She must have went to a private school. Four years after she started blogging in 2016, Jean was admitted to Purdue University, a United State in the United States of Indiana. Uh, Purdue University, I think it's outside Chicago. It's a good school. The Shanghai Municipal Education Commission caught off my path to high school, Jean told the Economic Observer. So I will use my own strength to defeat this wreck of an education system. So what is her goal? You're gonna write her goal. Her goal is to fix, and you guys fill that out. All right, let's see if there's anything we are missing. Let me take my mouse. You guys gonna pause while you write down and fill out what her goal is to fix what? What's on a system? Let me just check. We annotated, we identified words. Um, I think we just annotated. All right, you guys can identify the words if you want. All right, turn this in. We're moving on. I'm going to stop this, share, and start recording the next one. Nice job. And 